Look at that. See it? See what's going on there? That's a good thing. The mule palm. This one had some stem rot on it, probably from cold. Di I, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. This is a great thing. Very happy and relieved to see that it's finally pushing out some new growth. Had cold damage. There was some spear pull. The mule palms, which are these two right here, I can't really back up quite enough to give you a good shot. I can try it maybe from over here. That's a little bit better. Yeah, they're pretty big. Had them for a long time. They're just little seedlings. When I got them, I would have been devastated if these had died. Why am I using my weak hand for this? Use the strong one. Had these for a very long time. I would have been pretty upset if something had happened to these. I really, I should have gotten the whoppers for this. I don't know if these little hand pruners are going to be quite enough to cut through that stem. I really just need it to get it, get out of my face and cut it from up here. That way it's not hit me in the face when I walk by. That's better. But really more like that's just going to stab someone in the eye. Maybe I made it worse. There we go. Get that out of here. They're looking a lot better. Not much growing so far this year, but that's okay. So here's what's going on this week. There's only a few things that I need to do. It's very hazy and foggy because all the, you know, humidity, nice and moist in here. I need to do spider mite checkups. I need to walk around, see if there's any webbing on anything. If you don't know, I've been doing the beneficial or the predatory mites out here and I've had mixed results with it. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, it seems to be working, but it's not like a magic cure. One thing I've still had to stay very, very, very on top of. I have another round of predator mites that showed up in the mail last night that are going to go out. I also last night sprayed the plants down and opened up a jar of these uh, mealybug predators here and they're not, I think that, I think the jar they sent me may, they, a lot of them are dead. Went ahead and pulled some of the nesting material, whatever that stuff is out for them to crawl out of the ones that are alive. But down here, not much activity. There's some movement. There were a ton that were alive in here, but these, the Cryptolamus montrezurii, montrezurii, the, these, these things right there, see the label? Very expensive. Just going to sprinkle those out. Hope they do well. Set the jar down there in case the others want to crawl out. With the new mites that have come in, I have the Californicus right here, which have so far been the best that I've been using. I've had better luck with them. They seem to be fairly sturdy. Another jar here of the Hypoases. These are for fungus gnats, for soil dwelling critters. Those have worked well too. I haven't really had many fungus gnats and that's what I've been doing for those in a sense. I've been getting the blend and I assume that the blend has had that in there because it's the only thing I can think of as to why the fungus gnats haven't been bad this year. I do on occasion, you gonna focus? I hope so, I only have one hand. Give it a try. I do on occasion water in with the uh, Baxillus thuringiensis, this stuff right here. Last year I was doing it about, mm, I don't know, every other week to once a week when I'd water the plants, mix some of this in with the water. That helped a ton with the fungus gnats. I haven't been doing it every single week or even every other week this year because they just haven't been bad. And I assume that that's because of those other predator mites. I'm gonna do what needs to get done to handle pest things, do a big watering out here. The soil needs to be moist to release the predator mites that deal with the soil dwelling creatures. And I need to water regardless. It's been a few days, there was some construction that was going on out here, had a new step put in <laughs> for the dog. It's Toby's getting older and having trouble getting in the house. There's a, now a wider step for him to get into the house. So I couldn't water because there was just, there were things all over the place out here. So the plants, on this side are kind of thirsty. I turned you off. Why are you on? Why are you on? I turned that off. I don't know. Sometimes the heater just runs whenever it wants to. I wish it didn't do that, but it does. It's not on, but it is on. But the screen says it's not. Can't say I have great reviews to give for the Dynaglo X Series 10,000. It's had some problems. I've noticed a tiny bit of webbing up here on the top of this croton. I'm going to do something different with the release this time. I'm using these release boxes. Maybe that will help. I don't know. I'll do it all on camera. Go through the motions with y'all. That way people can let me know if I'm doing it wrong because I've never used those before. And uh, everything on this side, that's what I got cut off when the heater went on. Watered over here last night. So there might still be some water sitting down in the bases of these that I have to check, make sure the drains are open. Those, these three are good. That one looks pretty good. What about you? Are you good up here? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one, the oleander, it's got some problems. I uh, washed this down yesterday with just high pressure water. It's got mealybugs and 
spider mites. Despite having mealybug predators and spider mites out here and have been continually releasing them, that new infestation has shown up. I'm gonna do something different with this plant because the predator stuff, not working with this one. Get to that after I release the other bugs. And then I was thinking, since I can't really do anything out here after I release mites, I like to leave the space alone for a couple of days just because there's there's mites everywhere. It's gross, makes my skin crawl. You can go to a nursery, look at some plants. There's some things I need for outdoors and just, we'll prob probably buy some plants. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get the uh, hose set up, do some watering and release some mites and do something with that oleander over there. Are we good? This way, that way, it's freaking tripod. Slight detour from what I was doing out here. I ended up going down to the basement to turn the breaker off so the heater would shut off and come back on, which it did. Wait, did I not turn it back on? Crap. Nope, it's good. I found all kinds of fun stuff while I was down in the basement. This is also, you see this? This is why I don't normally film the watering process. It's uh, messy. A lot of water goes flying. I am going to blast the leaves because why not? I'm about to release another batch of bugs, so might as well give them a wash. I'm not going to be able to do that after I get a fresh bunch of predator mites onto everything. And this is all I do. Is it very exciting? Probably not. I just do this for like 25, 30 minutes. This is also going to increase the humidity in here, so it's going to get kind of foggy. That's that's the other reason that I don't normally film it. I'm going to get this done, let things air out, and come back. It's just, it's too much chaos for the camera. I need to focus on what I'm doing so I don't get anything wet that I'm not supposed to. Okay, a few hours have passed. I don't need to scream. <laughs> Forgot. Heater's off. I have the pump down the water, so there's not a lot of background noise. Time to deal with the predator mites out here. So what did I have? I have the Calphernicus and then the soil dwelling ones. The soil dwelling mites, they need to be released into a moist soil, which was kind of the prefaces while I was doing all the watering and everything. And then I went ahead and I waited a few hours because I realized that the soil being like sopping wet, not that it was sopping wet, it was a healthy amount of wet. I should probably let it drain out some more before releasing these. So it's been a few hours. I'm going to have to respray the foliage of the plants. Easy enough to do. I have a sprayer that'll be easy. And then the Californicus, which are the kind that are supposed to eat the spider mites. I'm not going to talk too in depth about the whole process. I did a separate video on it. This has been going on all winter. The only thing I'm doing differently than what I've always done is I'm using these release boxes. So these are from Nature's Good Guys. They come folded up in a pack like this. You just pop them open. There's a little hole you punch out, rip that open so this will hang around a leaf. You take the predator mites and just shake a whole bunch of them in there, hang it from wherever you think they need to be to get dispersed evenly and that is it. You just wait and do the rest because one of the problems that I've had, and I've mentioned this before, I think maybe, maybe not, with the croton has been getting the, getting this stuff right here, getting this vermiculite material that has the predator mites in there to stick. It's such a waxy leaf that the croton has that most of these things just fall right off and go to the ground. I did the little sachets that look like tea bags basically that have eggs in them. I almost said seeds. They have the eggs in them. They're supposed to hatch out over like 30 to 60 days, something like that. That time is pretty much passed and they don't really work for how I do things out here. Y'all just saw how I water. So I had to be very careful for the last couple months to not drench those with water whenever I was doing my thing out here. And that made it hard to clean the foliage of the plants off when they were getting dusty because things do get dusty out here. I'm thinking this is probably the right way to go to get, uh, how many do I have here? 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'll try and hang like five of these up inside of the croton. And then the rest I'm going to put on the top shelf of the grow shelves over here because that's been another difficult area to get these mites spread around. But first I have learned to do the predator mites last, the ones that you sprinkle, because you just, I end up feeling disgusting after I do that. With the uh, scamitis, scamitis, whatever you want to call them, the soil dwelling mites, these are good for fungus gnats, thrips, springtails, root aphids, and spider mites. I would assume only spider mites that hang out down by the soil. I'm going to sprinkle these around first, just a light coating on the top of all of the plants that are out here. I'm sure I'll miss a few, but just try my best to get them spread around. Then do the Californicus and then handle that oleander. Can you hear that? Is it that going to come through on the audio? No? Yes? It hissing sound. I'll get my microphone in there. Do you hear it? Turns out that was a pretty easy fix. Yep, there it goes again. I've only used this sprayer a few times, so it's disappointing that it's making all this 
sizzling noises if there's something wrong with the seal in there and I'm not over pumping it. It has a pressure valve on there. I don't really know why it's doing that. I do really like the sprayer, the Husqvarna sprayer. I picked that up from Lowe's in a vlog not too terribly long ago. I liked it because it had a nice flat bottom on it which make it easier to refill and to pump. You have to wear that tipping over outside. And in general, it's been pretty good so far. Not sure why it's making the hissing sound because I haven't been over pumping it, but not that I'm aware of anyway. Uh, is what it is. I thought I should mention, if anybody cares, the water that I'm using is reverse osmosis water. It doesn't need to be reverse osmosis water, but that's the kind of filter I have to make sure that the chlorine's been removed. I haven't really read anything about that being something you're supposed to do, but I figure, you know, tiny little critters, chlorine, probably not a great combination, so may as well use filtered water. It's also better to use filtered water if you're getting it all over the leaves of the plants too. It's that way you're not leaving behind mineral deposits or anything that's gonna just dry up and make things mucky. So that's what that is about there. I'm gonna re-wet everything. The humidity gauge is saying 74%, so hopefully that means things will stay nice and moist out here for a while. It was so humid in here after I finished watering, I could barely freaking breathe. Why I didn't bring the tripod over here while I was doing this? I complained about the mites and here I am just using my crotch to open the container up. Here we go, just a little. Well, that was, that was more than a little bit. <laughs> it was quite a few. I have a lot of plants to cover here, so I do need to be careful about how I do this. It's okay if they land on top of the leaves. The main thing is that they aren't too far from the soil. And really my main focus with these are the plants on the shelves. That's usually where fungus gnats are a problem because of the way that I have the drainage set up. I have it set up to drain very, very slowly so that the plants can have a soak as they're being watered. And that seems to be when the fungus gnats show up, particularly if I'm using a lot of organic fertilizers, which I haven't been because well, bugs started showing up. My cactus fell over. I need to do something about that. Especially making sure to get to the self-watering containers. It's where things are always the most moist. Down into the pothos. They also are nice and moist. Should have put a trigger at the beginning of the video saying that I was going to be using the word moist a whole bunch. Hey, look, the Prince of Orange. Getting ready to open up a new leaf. It's a little update with that one. I do think that I need to stake it up, which I probably said in the video when I put that whole thing together. I just, I totally forgot. No surprise there. I set it on the ground and it was like out of sight, out of mind. Have to say this is much more pleasant than spreading the Californicus because the Californicus, they just, they go everywhere. The vermiculite's so dusty. That's why I always feel like I need to take a shower afterwards because, well, because I'm pretty sure by the time I'm done, I'm covered in mites. Forget the gardenia. Got some up here for the queen. The moss in there. Fungus gnats aren't usually a problem in containers that have an aeroid mix in them, but we're here, so may as well give it a shot. And these are also supposed to be good for, what did I say, thrips, springtails. Assuming they just mean the bad kind of springtails, which are, are those really common? Y'all have to let me know. I've never really had a lot of issues with bad springtails. My culture springtails to use in the terrariums. Some in here for the rabbit's foot fern. See how dark it is over here at the side of the garage? It's gonna be a lot harder to film stuff over here. Don't think the bromeliads need it, but why not? There's a lot of moisture in the area because, you know, the middle of them's full of water. But just a few left. What the heck? Where did these come from? A <laughs> bag of paper white bulbs over here that look fine. They're even budding. I bet when... It, okay, so the garage got a big cleaning over here. I put this new staircase in it and I bet that this had fallen behind the old step. I vaguely remember at some point missing a bag of bulbs. That's nice to have found those. Pretty sure I bought those like two years ago. Good to know. Nice to know where those were. I think all that's left is the croton and the philodendron that's over here. Soil blend that's in here with this croton drains pretty quickly so I don't know how much I really need to use. Okay, I still have this much left. I just finished with the other side so with this I'm just I'm gonna go kind of crazy and just Sprinkle them around up top. They'll work their way down to the soil on their own. At least one would hope. I don't think the etch of, I don't know if I got that on camera. I forgot to look at the camera while I was doing the thing that was the entire point of the beginning of the video. Oh, no, the ginger. Forgot about the ginger. You know what? Give this one, it can have the rest of it. That's a lot, but the ginger gets a lot of water. So if there's any plant that needs more protection from fungus gnats, probably this one. I'll put the empty right there. That way anything that's in there can work its way out. Okay, now. Californicus. I got excited. I thought a variegated leaf had popped out on my rostrata. It didn't. Just a shadow. Heliconia rostrata, that is. I'm going to load up the boxes. Now this is the part I'm not going to film because it's just, it's going to be raining dust and I'm going to feel disgusting and I don't want to have to be focusing on the camera while I'm doing those things. So we'll cut back here when I'm dealing with that oleander. 
Audio, we good? Wasn't sure. Walked away from the camera and forgot to turn my mic off. So I saw a battery. I still got some battery. The boxes are hung. I ended up putting four inside of the Croton. You can't even see them, but they're in there. And I put a couple up here in the Eureka Palm. I completely forgot that the other day I had to cut an entire frond off of this thing because it had spider mites on it. It was one that was hanging over right here. So I don't know how I hadn't noticed that, but... They were there, they're not all over the plant. My concern with the Eureka Palm and the Mule Palms is that when I go to move them outside and uh, free them from the ceiling in here that it'll just be an infestation of spider mites up there. So I went ahead and put two boxes inside of there as well. And I was up on a ladder, so I sprinkled a whole bunch in there just to be safe. Get to the oleander in a minute. Two boxes on the top shelf, two boxes on the other top shelf and I sprinkled the rest all around. Really, surprisingly, I think I probably should have bought more because there are some areas where I went a little bit light and I also just realized that I completely forgot to get the Pakistakis and the Hibiscus here, which, so I'm sure there are other plants I forgot. Yeah, I forgot the McDowell and some other plants that are down lower, so gonna be placing another order. Gotta keep at this. For the Oleander, this has spider mites and mealybugs on it probably some scale and thrips. I mean, who knows? It's just not looking great, is it? I'm going to do something a little bit different with this one. You can see it's not for lack of trying. This has one, two, three. This has three. There's three. Three, three of those bags on one plant, which that's excessive. And still having a problem here. Also a whole bunch of ladybugs on here too that I don't can you see it in there? They're in there. They're just the regular ladybugs. They're not the mealybug destroyers, which this would be a great place for those to be hanging out. But of course, no. People do say that sometimes regular ladybugs will eat mealybugs. That has not ever been my experience. Yeah, they may nibble on a few here and there, but not to the point where I would consider them to be a reliable predator, beneficial to have around to keep away mealybugs. I mean, look, this is mealybugs all over it and ladybugs. And I've released... 1,500, 1,500, 1,500, 1,500, 6,000, and then 15,000. I've released over 20,000 ladybugs in here. Still got mealybugs. No aphids, though. Haven't been noticing many of the other types of critters. So the ladybugs are doing their job, just not the mealybugs, and that's okay. Wasn't expecting them to. With mealybugs, there are a lot of options. None of them are one that's really going to last a long time. Most of the systemics don't really work unless you get up to something that's a high concentration that you need like a license to get a hold of. A really high concentration of imidacloprid can work sometimes as a systemic. I don't like using systemics on flowering plants. Not great for the pollinators, so that's not a route I'd be taking anyways. Uh, oftentimes I'll just take a cotton swab, dip it in alcohol, and just go around and poke them. That kills them. Included dish soap. I like to do dish soap with some peppermint oil in there, and sometimes I'll go through and lightly spray the patches with rubbing alcohol first, help get that waxy cuticle off of the mealybugs. That way, what I spray them with will stick. Neem oil, and then there are plenty of other sprays you can try. Most of them are effective on contact, but you have to stay on top of it. I haven't been spraying because I have all the beneficials out here, so this was my concern, was that the mealybugs would get out of control. They've always been a problem in the Eureka Palm, and there are some up there, but it's not as bad as it usually is this time of year. But that's been good. Not trying to you know, knock on plastic. That's not even real wood. That's why I released more of the uh, mealybug destroyer lady beetles over there, which most of those were dead. That doesn't usually happen. I'm going to order a packet of larvae. You get a thousand when you order those and it's cheaper and release those into the plants that are problematic for mealybugs. What's the oleander? Gonna do something different here because just why not? It's not a plant I'm really attached to. This is the Austin Pretty Limits Oleander, similar to the Calypso, which is just a nice magenta-y pink flower that they have. It's supposed to be really full and bushy and everything, but it's an oleander. This is not a plant that I am going to allow to cause me some kind of headache when it comes to maintenance because they are generally very sturdy and foolproof plants. Mealybug situation, I consider this just opening up a door for experimentation. Might as well take these off because I'm going to go ahead and say those were pointless. I guess I can't say they were entirely pointless. Maybe the infestation would have been much worse if I hadn't had those on there. Who knows? But at the very least, pointless when it comes to the mealybugs. Can you see? Let me look at all that. That's disgusting. And there is a ladybug up there and it looks like there's some empty cotton masses where maybe they have been eating them. I don't know. But judging from the amount of mealybugs on here, I'd say probably not something I should rely on, right? 
Seems like a bad idea. I'm gonna go up in here and get the ladybugs off. I don't want to subject them to what I'm about to do to this plant. Oh, there's a few of them up there. Pulled about six ladybugs off of there. I just kind of flicked them down. They, they can go and do their own thing. I was debating giving this a cutback. Uh-oh, missed one. Get off of there. Go on, get off. With this plant, I'm saying forget the beneficials. Anybody, you have it? Any guesses to what I'm doing here? You can go with poison with this one. Something nice and toxic. This is a hot shot strip. Use them in your garages, attics, kill crawling and flying insects. Not supposed to have them in areas where you breathe. So I don't, I'm not gonna give like a rundown on how to use this because this isn't its intended purpose. So technically probably shouldn't be doing it. Not supposed to use them in areas where there's going to be prolonged exposure. I'm gonna drop that down in there. And there it is. I don't know if it's going to work. Here's the thing with those hot shot strips. I used to use those in the grow space years ago. I had the, usually would have two of them up at a time, replace them every three or four months. Never had pest problems. I stopped using them because I noticed on the back it said, don't use them in areas where you hang out for a certain amount of time. They specify, or at least they used to. I didn't read the warning on it because I'm putting it in a bag, so I know I'm not going to be exposing myself to it. So I was just like, whatever. Read the directions on things. I'm not advising anybody to do this. I'm just curious to see uh, what a week inside of a bag with the hot shot strip is going to do. Not that that's going to translate to a real world scenario because this is going to be a concentrated environment, whereas this is a big open space. I probably wouldn't go back to using those strips out here regardless because I have this big body of water that vaporizes water particles out. So if that toxin that's in the hot shot strip gets into the water and then vaporized out, inhaling even more of it, but I'm inhaling it as a vaporized chemical. That's, that sounds like a horrible idea, doesn't it? What I'm wondering though is that maybe if this is effective after a week or two inside of the bag, this could be something I do for plants where I have more problems with them. So I also have a Singapore twist cordolan that gets covered in mealybugs every winter, no matter what I do with that plant. Covered. I spray it, they come back. I spray it, they come back. I spray it, they come back. Last winter it got sprayed once a week. Still, mealybugs. Same thing with the Eureka palm. Been dealing with that for a pretty long time. Not that I don't think I could fit one of these bags over the Eureka Palm. Not sure how I'd put a bag around the Eureka Palm. Could put some kind of plastic enclosure around it, but when it gets to that level, I think it's easier to just take it outside and spray it off. Can't really do that once a week, though. You have to go at it nonstop with the mealybugs to get rid of them fully. So uh, there's that's what's going on with the oleander. I'm gonna give it a week. I'll pop the bag open, see what it looks like in there. Also, if you're wondering why I didn't go through and kill any of them, is because I wanted to leave them alive. I want to see what's going to happen with that hot shot strip in there. Otherwise, I wouldn't bother doing any of this. Play bugs, like all living things, have a life cycle. So this isn't something where I'm going to achieve a permanent result within just a week or even two weeks. It's going to need to be a couple of months of this. So I'll have to open that bag up and close it and open it and close it and pull the plant out to water it. Don't know if the juice is going to be worth the squeeze, but hey, we'll find out. And I just feel better knowing that that infestation has been contained. I could have cleaned it up, yes. I wanna see what's gonna happen with this though. Okay, on that note, it's dark out. I need to turn the lights out so that the predator mites can do their thing, relax and start moving around. And then we'll pick up in the morning, and go, go to a nursery, see some plants, bring some plants home, probably have a plant haul. I don't know. There we go, rain's finally letting up. It was coming down kind of hard there for a minute. Couldn't even talk, the wipers were going, making all that wiper noise. It was that in-between kind of rain where like the wipers sensing that there's moisture so they need to run but it's not enough really for them to be running so they make that awful screeching sound. Not a fan of that. Anyway, I am excited. I'm gonna check out the plants. I really want to remember that at least a few days ago they had posted a bunch of their succulents and I saw what looked like some variegated schlumbageras there, the Thanksgiving cactus. And I've wanted one of those for a while. When those get larger, they look really cool. And uh, a trailer, right? I need something for the hanging baskets outside. Really, the only trailers this time of year I ever see are Ivy and Creepin' Jenny. So, nothing terribly exciting there. There's always the trailing pansies, but I'm not really a fan of those. They don't end up taking off and doing much trailing. To me, they end up just looking more like really limp pansies that could use some help right it's gonna hang down and look sad if you live in a climate where things are more mild for a longer period of time i'm sure they get really beautiful but here it's like by the time they're ready to start going is when the heat starts to roll in and once the heat starts to roll in 
they're, well, they're pansies. They just don't look that great. And they usually have a pretty good selection of greens, cool season greens, lettuce, the, what, what the, you know, the colorful stuff. What is it called? Chard. Usually have a bunch of chard. Rainbow, Swiss, chard. And they have a great selection of house plants. I don't know how much I'll film in there. I'm going to try, I'm going to Greenscape, by the way. I don't know if I said that. Greenscape Garden, St. Louis. Great nursery, I was at Sugar Creek last week. Fantastic nursery, next week I'll probably be heading over to Sherwood's Forest and then maybe the week after, well, whenever Weethop, Wythop opens up, that's where I get a lot of my annuals for the summer. They're only open for a couple months a year. I'll be going there. I'm trying to space out the nursery visits, just like one a week with the local places, with the big box stores, I don't care. With the smaller nurseries, I think it's nice, they're local to be able to, have them have their own videos, even though I really don't film that much while I'm in there just because I don't like to film other people, but still, you get it, trying to keep them spread apart a little bit, even though I do think it would be fun to just hit them all up in one day, which we might do sometime. I don't think there'd be much of a point in doing that this time of year because it's a lot of the same stuff other than houseplants, but it's, you know, pansies, maybe some bulbs, some greens, Things aren't really coming in just yet. A few more weeks for that, and then everybody has to put up their sign saying it's too soon to plant. Here's the plants for you, because we know you don't want to wait, but be careful, because there will be frost. That's always the hardest part of spring, right, is having to wait until the right time to get those summer annuals outside. As much as I do, of course, want to fill the car up with all kinds of tropicals and houseplants, I don't know what they really have to begin with also. Still dealing with that spider mite situation. Hopefully the last release will have made it better. There's still plenty of time for all of that. I don't want to rush into things too soon, but this, I mean, who knows what's going to happen when I get in there. I don't know what they have in stock. I would imagine probably mostly house plants and a few things for some spring containers. Either way, it'll be fun to have a quick glance at everything, grab a few annuals and get back. Maybe get that hanging basket put together. Maybe, depending on the weather. I think it's supposed to stay like this, so that might just have to wait, but at least I'll have the plants to get it done with. Oh, there they are. Lots of pottery. That's the other thing. They have a lot of pottery. I have to remember to look at pottery because I need to repot that McDowell. I've been saying that for what, like two months? I need to get on top of that. Look at it. It feels so good to be back. That's some nice little alocasias and some carnivores, saracenias, and some venus fly traps, just tons loaded. And I've been informed that there's a truck full of tropicals coming tomorrow, <laughs> of course, so we'll be back next week, because gotta see the tropicals, even though I shouldn't be getting any. I want to see them all. It's nice ficus over here. And vial, this is, I have to remember, I need to grab some vial as while I'm here, because I did that umbrella planter and the pansies were too big. I see some lobularia too. Wanna grab some of that, but I might hold off. I don't know if I'm quite ready for that yet. Oh, it smells amazing in here from the pansies and the lobularia and some nice looking areca palms. Nice and full and great big Cordelins over there, bird of par I don't have to name it all, do I? Crotons, see them? Lots of great stuff. Got the white and the orange bird of paradise. Price is pretty good on these, but these will start popping out some spikes here in not too long. This is a nice cooler weather. Oh, look at that. Nice big one right there. It's ready to open up. That's gonna be beautiful. This one's loaded with spikes. Got one, two, three. Okay, maybe it's not loaded. It has three. That's still, that's pretty good. So is this one, whole bunch on there too. These are bigger. I bet these are a lot more. Yeah, 129. Well, that, there's many more years of growth on those than on the smaller ones. Those smaller ones could get them pushing out some blooms too, though. I don't think it would be too hard. I bet they already have, oh, look at that. They already have some. I was so excited to move on to other plants. I didn't even notice. That one's already got spikes on it. It's got two. That's a good sized plant too. You know, I said I wasn't here for the tropicals, but they're already in spike, so it's like maybe I should go ahead and grab one just because I'm here. Even though you know I'm gonna be back in not too long at all. That's the other great fragrance. It's the citrus. The citrus are in full bloom. That's that smell. Some limes and pomegranates, lemons, lots of lemons. I was gonna say, I was like, it smells really sweet in here. I was attributing that to the uh, uh, pansies and the lobularia, but this is has that spice to it. Makes more sense. Citrus. Lots of citrus. This is nice. 
Look at that. That is a great shape to it. It's a navel orange. Really nice, thick graft. That's a beautiful plant. Wouldn't that look excellent? Any one of these. Pot it up into like a, a weathered terracotta planter. That looks so cool. I shouldn't do it, but I really, really want to. I don't really care for the navel oranges, but the plants, they look so good. I don't really care about that part. Meyer lemons, that's probably the way to go if you want to grow citrus indoors. They are so prolific. This would make a fantastic bonsai. This laurel, well, it's a great bonsai potential in there. And a perfect little kumquat. I love kumquats. They are so stinking cute. Such nice looking plants when they start to fruit and they end up covered in their tiny little kumquats. Kind of like a calamondin. Usually a little bit more sturdy than the calamondins. They just look fun. I think, okay, that's been enough. Y'all have seen what they have. Be back many times to this nursery. I'm sure there will be more plants to look at. The highway is very loud. I'm not seeing any trailers, but that's okay. We'll be back. I'm gonna hold up a cart, go back to the house, and you can see what, oh, there's a creeping Jenny. It's right there, right in front of me. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? They were loaded. Got the Alyssa plant haul time. If you had, did you figure that out? I grabbed a few six packs of these Easter Bonnet Mix Alyssum Lobularia. I didn't actually even read the tag on this one. I just assumed that this was the crystal mix, which is what I've always grown. But now that I'm looking at it here under my filming lights that really bring things to life, these are much more vivid than the crystal mix. And there's this nice yellow hue that some of them have. They smell fantastic, just like you would expect from a Lobularia. I'm not seeing a size description on this. That's one thing with Lobularia. They do have various sizes. I'm a big fan of the Snow Princess from Proven Winners. This time of year, there aren't many annuals out from Proven Winners. So you just got to take what you can get. Isn't that beautiful? These are going to be great for filling in around spring planters and arrangements. Put them down as a little ground cover. These are, they're dry. Very dry. That's surprising because what I didn't tell y'all is it's actually the next day because I had some stuff I had to deal with, with Charter, with the cable company. I ended up taking basically the entire day. I was on the phone with them from 10.30 until 3.30. Back and forth to the stores, just... It's just a delight dealing with the cable company. Just kidding. And a couple of the other plants that I picked up were looking pretty thirsty and I wanted them to plump back out to show you. So I went ahead and gave them a soak overnight. These I had sitting in my driveway in the gorilla cart. So I want to make sure that they stay hardened off since they're going to be using planters outside with the, what a, the planter I just did in my last video, the daffodils and the hyacinths. That's why I need these violas for. That was really the thing I was the most excited about grabbing from there were some violas. Great mixture of color here. The penny jump mix, jump up mix, violas. Look real nice. They have some great colors to them. I love the happy little pouty faces that violas have. So I'll be using those to fill in that container. That's why this whole flat needed to stay outside because it's cool outside and I don't want to bring one here where it's warm and humid and then come back outside and shock them. But it's <laughs> it rained all day, so I'm surprised that those are dry, but I guess they were just enough under the overhangs. That's fine, I'll give them some water. Not a big deal. And then the Creeping Jenny. I got three of these, but I only, I think they all kind of look the same. I didn't think I needed to bring all three of them inside. They're the Goldie Golden type, which is not my favorite, but that seems to be all anybody sells anymore. I really appreciate just the deep green regular Creepin' Jenny. I'm not sure why the yellow one has taken over. That's, I suppose, nice for fall arrangements. But in the spring, I really want some green around. Why has it gotta be yellow? Beggars can't be choosers. I grabbed three of those for a hanging basket that I talked about in last week's vlog where I needed a trailer to go over the side. So I grabbed three of those. Not much to choose from this time of year as far as spring annuals, because it's not even spring yet. Alyssa and Violas, Pansies, Creeping Jenny. Might see some Ivy and some Vinca occasionally and then lots of greens hellebores are an option if you're looking to spend a lot of money on your planters and then in a few weeks when things warm up some more the gerbera daisies will be out and primrose other great options oh and spring bulbs right but otherwise that's this is about what you can find so it's not a huge selection but it's a lot of color a lot of fragrance smells nice cannot wait to get these into the planters outside which i was hoping to do in this video but looked at the forecast that definitely not going to happen. I also grabbed a couple of pots. Just be, I, did, I was supposed to get one for the McDowell. Here's the thing. I didn't. I, I didn't forget. I looked around thinking, oh yeah, I need to find a great pot to put my McDowell in. 
I love this plant. I love it so much that apparently my standards are ridiculously high and nothing's gonna be good enough for my philodendron. No, not really. Actually, I remember that I have a container that's really long and narrow that I think that it will do well. And I'm either gonna put the McDowell in there or I have a dark form, a round form. I have a dark form, round form Gloriosum that I think would look good in those. Have you seen those? They have like really big heart-shaped fat leaves on them. Can talk about that when it's time to deal with that. These are the new pots. These are to go in my office upstairs. My curtains have a pattern that's kind of like this. I was in there looking at it. I was like, oh, that's going to fit perfectly. But that's not, it, that's not quite the pattern on my curtains, but whatever. Darker tones. That's what I have upstairs. This would be good. If I want to have some plants to put in the office upstairs. And then there's only a couple left. I actually got more, but I'm not going to show you everything. Have to leave some things up as an element for surprise when I do other videos. Makes it less exciting to do a video where you're doing a planter or an arrangement if you've already just seen it in, in a plant haul video, right? Gotta hold something back. Here they are. Look at them. Aren't they beautiful? The Madame Butterfly Schlumbagera. <laughs> Schlumbagera. Variegata. Variegated Schlumbageras. See it? It's just a Thanksgiving cactus, but they have variegated pads on them. Nice, fun color. Schlumbagera. Christmas cactus, Thanksgiving cactus, Easter cactus, all of them. I think they look really cool just with the foliage. They flower is just a bonus. They're plants I enjoy growing just because of the shape. I mean, look at his shape. What is that? It's like the, do you remember the Mario Brothers, the little spiky cactus ball things that would hop around or kind of, they like did this across the screen and you had to jump over them. I'm not going to risk putting something up from Nintendo on the screen. The video will get demonetized. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. Well, they kind of remind me of those. Just look at all the color that's in there. Lots of color, lots of contrast, just beautiful plants. I've wanted a variegated Schlumbagera for... I, I don't know, a very, very, very long time. I think since I was a teenager, I'd just never seen them for sale at the stores before. I'd seen them online, but I've never been one to order Thanksgiving or Christmas cactus online. I had tried off of, like back in the day, when I'd order plants off of eBay and they just looked horrible whenever they came in. I don't know if that was just the times and people weren't shipping plants as well or just that they don't ship well. Another possibility. I don't know. I just had a few bad experiences, so I just never went back to ordering anymore or trying it again. So that's, that's on me. I probably should have tried again. Doesn't really matter regardless. They look beautiful. I'm going to maybe put them together so that they both can be in focus. I am going to pot these up together. These were the ones that I soaked overnight. Their pads were pretty shriveled. They were really dry, so I let them just sit in a little bitty tiny thing of water last night so that they could soak that up and they plumped right back up. They look great. Same as a regular Schlumbagera, gonna grow perhaps a little bit more slowly. I haven't grown these before, so I'm just basing it off of what people have told me who have grown them. And that's generally true of variegated plants. Gonna have some slower growth, have to be a little more careful with the sunlight that they get. Yeah, that's it for those. Aren't they fun? I'm really, really, really excited and happy about those. Want them for a long time. They're just cuttings shoved into a pot. Repotting these, getting them into their own container where they can share a container, I think would be a good idea because they're slow growers as it is. That'll help create a more full planter because it's going to be a few years until this looks like a nice big plant. I would rather have them together partially because it'll look more full and like a nice big plant more quickly and because I, d I don't want to have to take care of two separate ones. I want to just Stay together. Okay, and there's one more plant. I've been debating holding off until next week to show it. I know I'm not trying to be a tease. It's just I have to clear a spot for it and I don't feel like doing it right now. It's kind of a big, thick, girthy girl. I'm gonna, ch I don't even know if it's gonna, it's gotta go right here. I don't know if it's gonna fit, but I'll give it a try. See if I can get it over there. My plan had been to get a new plant to put in this container, which I still, why is this, that's not, I don't know why that's in there. Obviously, I can still do just not. There's another. Who did this? There's another person involved with the cleanup out here to make room to get those stairs put in. It was not me. Okay, right, it's a little bit heavy too. I think that'll fit. Might be a little tight. There we go, like a glove. That's. Yeah, I got the bird of paradise. Smashing on the hibiscus, and I should probably do something about that. I actually might move the hibiscus. I was thinking about popping it over on the other side of the pond. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I don't know if it's gonna show on camera. I twisted the hibiscus around to open this up so it can more light 
can get to it. You talk, I'm excited. I'm having a lot of trouble talking. When I get hyper and excited, that's when I have trouble focusing on my point. Isn't it just beautiful? Look at it. I mean, you probably are. You're watching a video. I don't know why you'd be watching a video if you're not looking at what's going on. Actually, a lot of people tell me they just like to listen. That's fine. If you're not looking, I suggest you have a look because this is a beautiful, beautiful specimen of a plant. I'm picky about my orange bird of paradise because sometimes they can get really stretched out. The growth on the inside can get twisty, which will happen with age on the plant. I just don't like it when they start doing that. And I like the more short, stout leaves and the stiff growth. I don't like it when they're all stretched out and they have big floppy leaves on them. Save that for the white bird of paradise, not for the orange. I like a minimum of three to five plants per container, and I like the container. And the container has to be solid. I need to know that there's a big root mass in there because there's not a tight root mass. Not going to get flowers. And this one has one, two, three, four, and a five. There's a fifth one down in there. Hey, you heard me right. There are at least five spikes in there. This plant's going through a lot. It was just in a greenhouse and now it's in here. Going to be some changes. So I don't, can't say for sure what's going to happen with the flower spikes. Generally, once they start going, pretty sturdy plants. And I think this is a good spot for it. I'm not likely to overwater it right here. You're getting a good amount of, I mean, you can see all the light reflecting off of it. I also, I came up into the Eureka bomb. I pruned some fronds out to allow more light to come through for the plant. If those buds hold on the way I would want them to, this plant will have flowers on it for the next several months. That is exciting. I'm so excited about this. I've had Orange Bird of Paradise before. You may remember them from the channel. Like right when the channel got going, it was one of the first plants I did a video on a long time ago. Actually the plant that got me into plants, I think, I think it was, my aunt had gotten me a book, just like a old school plant book where the pictures are drawn and they're not photographs. There's an orange bird of paradise in the book and I was a little kid. I'd never seen that in person before. I'd never seen them available to buy before. It wasn't really until I was in my 20s that I started seeing them for sale around here. Not that they're ever rare plants, but people just didn't ship them this far north in St. Louis. They didn't come up this far or over this far from the west coast to buy. Because they, they need a lot of light. If you want to get them flowering and they have nice growth on them, they really, it's not the best house plant, not a terrible house plant. I think the white one's much better just as far as longevity goes, but they do get absolutely gigantic. So not, maybe not the best house plant in that regard. The oranges generally three to six feet tall, depending on the type of white they're getting, depending on the type that you're growing, because there are different forms or different varieties with different looking flowers or some that don't even have any leaves on them. I got rid of the ones that I had, the ones that were in the videos. Oh, I think it was in 2020. It was in 2020. It was a plant that I kind of culled from the collection. I had two of them. They got really big and they were heavy. There were health things going on with some surgeries in my shoulder and just, I was focused on bringing my most valuable, important plants inside and it didn't make the cut. There was a reason for that. It wasn't just because they were big and I was trying to protect my body because I was healing from things that were going on, but also the backyard just didn't, it doesn't get as much sun as it used to. So uh, I saw that as a plant that was almost a waste because it was like, well, if I want to keep these and have them flowering, they have to stay in the driveway and I can never see them in the driveway. So what's the point? And uh, like they had just exploded out of their pots and to be repotted. It wasn't something I was going to be able to do in the near foreseeable future. So I got rid of them. I don't regret it. I have missed them somewhat, kind of, but as far as what it made room for out here, I think it was worth getting rid of them. Having a new one starting over, I'm into that. I almost bought a new one last year and I said I should just hold off and wait. I uh, There's some stuff going on in the backyard that I haven't talked about yet. I think there will be more sunlight back there than there used to be. The neighbors are putting in a pool, the ones who live right up the hill from me, and part of them putting in a pool has been that they're going to cut down everything in their landscaping. So all the trees, the birch trees that, are, that drop junk into my backyard all summer and into the pool every, I have to scoop leaves out of that dang pool every single day because that birch tree. I am fine with seeing it go. That type's not a native here. If it's not native, it can go. And they're gonna be replanting and redoing their landscaping. So it's not like it's just gonna be a barren yard up there. But a lot of the trees that are up on the hill in my backyard are going to be gone. So that's going to allow more light into the yard, which means maybe I'll be able to keep it growing with some nice form and keep it flowering. If not, I have a spot by my gate, a couple spots by my gate where this will get a really, really, really intense morning 
sun and a little break and then afternoon sun which should be fine for it this was not one of the 150 dollars ones i don't remember if i named the prices off maybe i did it was a middle tier and it had the most flower buds on it, which i thought well, i have to get it right okay no i can't credit myself with that i didn't realize that it wasn't the 150 dollars one until after i was home and i had already paid for it i pulled out of the car and i saw the price tag i was like oh that's good it was much cheaper than i thought it was gonna be that was I would have spent 150 or 130, however much it was, worth it. It takes a long time to get them big enough to fill out a container like this, and they're heavy plants to ship up here. And house plants just don't cost what they used to. So if I'm not buying them as often, but getting ones that I really like, I'm okay with it. And five spikes on there, then that's just right now. It'll probably push up some more, more light, cooler temperatures in the evening. My heater, I shut it down. Don't turn it off in the evening, but I have it set to drop. Right now it's dropping into the upper 60s. In a few weeks, I'm going to have it dropping into the upper 50s. So I have to start getting things hardened off to move them outside. And I like to do that nice and slow. When I do that is when a lot of the plants start flowering. They enjoy that up and down. The metanillas will probably start to put out some buds. A lot of the orchids will probably start doing some things. And the bird of paradise, they appreciate that too. They just have to get enough sunlight. There are four very intense grow lights up there. We're about four feet above it might need to lower that down a couple of feet. I don't know, just keep an eye on it and see what happens. I'm excited. Isn't that fun? It's gonna be so fun. How beautiful is it gonna be? Having the bird of paradise flowers over here with the hibiscus and the, it just looks so lovely. Hopefully it's not gonna get covered in spider mites and mealybugs. Mealybugs, they, from my experience, generally do really enjoy munching on a bird of paradise. But I think I talked about when I was doing the pest stuff out here the other day or several minutes ago for y'all, that I've placed an order for the larvae and I'm going to be putting those and I'm going to be putting those all over the place out here as a preventative measure because other than that oleander I haven't been seeing a ton of mealybugs but you you saw how many were on that one oleander that means that they're probably scattered all over the place and I'm just not seeing them so I have to get on top of predators for the mealybugs not that any of them seem to be really actually doing anything I haven't had luck with lace wings or the soldier larvae or ladybugs or the mealybug destroyer ladybugs but i haven't tried the larvae we'll give those a shot it's just it's perfect i love it it's it is the perfect bird of paradise it has a great shape to it lots of spikes nice healthy plant hopefully gonna have it for many more years i'm not going to repot it because that's just going to make it not want to bloom I like a mature root structure inside of their container so i will probably either set the pot into the ground so it looks like it's planted this summer or if i have a container that that fits into properly that i think will look nice i'll just drop it in like a cash pot but i'm not going to mess with repotting it i love these two beautiful beautiful little shumbajeras had a great time at the nursery their tropicals are supposed to be coming in i think tomorrow or today they came in i'm gonna be hopping back out there to have a look see what they have uh, comment down below say hi love talking to everybody how's your weekend going fun plants starting rolling to the nurseries anybody starting up with some spring stuff Hope so, at least just getting outside that fresh air and the sunlight, so good. It makes me feel so much more peaceful and relaxed and energetic at the same time. And I know that doesn't make sense, but if you're an outdoorsy plant and animal person, you get what I'm saying. It revives. I feel revived being able to spend time outside and get dirty and break a sweat and get projects done. There, one thing I meant to mention, when I pulled that hot shot strip out of the bag and it was facing my drink right there, I just wanted to, just so nobody feels they need to comment on it, I didn't touch that drink after that. I saw what I had done. I took it inside, washed that out very, very, very heavily and got a new glass. That, that was that bad practices. Should not just open a bag that has a toxin inside of it and just and then squeeze it and set it right next to something you're ingesting. That, don't do that. That was just me being stupid. Okay, can't wait for those buds to open up on there. They may end up, it's, the plants have been moved around a lot, so I won't be surprised if they come out kind of wonky, but... I'll take it, even just for the plant. They're just such nice looking plants. I love the structure. N know a lot of you who live in Florida and California are watching this and you're just like, really? It's just a bird of paradise. There's just something special about it. When you see around here that often, it's one that if you're growing them in a container and they have to be inside for a good part of the year, it's a labor of love getting them to bloom. And it just, it feels so nice having them flower. Not that I can't take credit for those flowers. I didn't do it, which is a different kind of sweetness, the lazy kind that I'm fine with. All right, as always, and most important, I can't finish it. People are gonna wanna see the pets. I didn't show the pets at all. Turbo's at boot camp, or day school, whatever you wanna call it, so he may not be in the vlogs very much the next few weeks. 
and pumpkin's been sleeping a lot and there's construction going on in the house all the pets are fine when i don't show them people ask if everything's okay pets are good i'll make sure that they get some more screen time next week but for now this is just strictly a plant and predator mate video like i'm rambling but people keep asking for longer videos so there you go you're welcome i can talk more about turbo and his day school day training stuff he's doing it's all for socialization he's basically just going to a place where he plays with dogs all day long around trainers i think he's really enjoying it too maybe i'll put some stuff in with the pets right now right when right when i do the thing where i say keep on growing bye bye let me say hi toby give me some money i need more come on give me some more thank you good boy what a good boy i don't have treats i don't know why you always just assume i have treats on me there's no treats there's no treats such a sweetheart you having fun with turbo being gone all day so much Toby time. I'm loving all your Toby time. Thanks, Toby. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that was enough. That's enough standing for today. You did enough of that. Time to get some rest. So much work being cute. You go ahead and have a rest.